Hi, I'm Marlon Hargrove, and welcome to Marlon's Magic, a video series brought to you by Berwick Offray Ribbon Company, the makers of America's most beautiful ribbons. And today we're working in the second of our series on bow tying, traditional floral bows that you need to know how to do in order to be a successful florist. Today we'll feature our number 40 ribbon, which can be used for funeral work, for wreaths, garlands, anything of a larger scale. And we, we use the wider width just because it, it produces a better look and it's in, it's in proper scale to, to the actual item that you're using it for. This also comes in a 100, which some people do choose to use for funeral work. As earlier, we, in our first video, we used the uh, number nine for our potted plant size, which is a great size to learn on. And we use the same concept with our number 40, it's just our dimensions are a little bit different. So we're gonna be making a bow today that would fit perfectly on a little um, indoor spring wreath. And we will start with our tail, allowing about eight to 10 inches. And we will use our, our thumb and our index finger at our gathering point for the knot of our bow. Using our shiny side up, and then we'll add our twist, allow for another eight to 10 inches for the first loop. We bring that coming from behind forward and tuck that in and then twist again, repeating that same pattern coming from behind and bringing forward and gathering up into our knot. Now this is again our dimension of our bow and it won't grow any larger than any wider than that. Actually it's going to diminish as we, as we build the layers and it'll make it more of a rounded front bow. So we will continue that process adding one loop to each side and twisting with every gather until we're going to get about um, six loops on each side and then a small loop in the center. So three, four, five, and six. And see our finished, our last loop is drastically smaller than, than the first loop we created. So you can see the difference there. Then to complete the look, we just do a small little loop right over our thumb, tucking it underneath the thumb and the index finger, twisting that, and that creates our second tail. We can cut that off at an angle. And then we're going to tie it off. And where we had just used a floral wire and a wood pick before, we're going to use a chenille stem from Milton Adler. These are 12 inch um, flexible wires covered in chenille. And they're used to help protect the surfaces that, um, that we use our bows, our w wires near, so it doesn't scratch those surfaces. It's easy to gather and you just twist in the back. They're very, very flexible. So then we will, <clears throat> excuse me, we will take this and apply it to our wreath. And this is a, um, an herb wreath from Plus One Imports. And we simply just take the chenille, work it around the frame of the wreath, twist, bring our tails down, fluff our ribbons out, and that's completed. But, so that's the second in our, in our series, and we appreciate you joining us. Next will be the using of uh, number three ribbons for bud bases and corsage work. Thanks for joining us.